Bone is a very strong but very rigid type of connective tissue. Another type of connective tissue that is also strong but is much more flexible is known as cartilage. And that's exactly why cartilage is found in those regions of our body that require a greater degree of flexibility, such as, for example, our nose, our outer ear, our bronchial tubes inside our lungs, our rib cage, our trachea, the epiglottis as well as our joints. So on top of discussing cartilage, we're also going to discuss the three types of joints in our body, the fixed joints, also known as the fibrous or immovable joints, the synovial joints, as well as our cartilaginous joints. So, what exactly is cartilage? Well, cartilage is a type of connective tissue that consists of cells known as chondrocytes as well as the extracellular matrix. And the extracellular matrix of this cartilage is made up of three types of substances. We have the collagen fibers, we have elastin fibers, and we have proteoglycans. So, proteoglycans are proteins that contain our sugar components, the collagen fibers are those proteins that give our cartilage its strength and the elastin fibers are those proteins that give the cartilage its flexibility. So we have three types of uh, cartilage connective tissues. We have the hyaline cartilage, we have the elastic cartilage, and we have our fiber cartilage. And these different types of cartilage differs from one another based on the concentration of these substances inside the matrix of that particular cartilage. So let's begin with the hyaline cartilage. So the hyaline cartilage is basically a transparent type of cartilage so we can see through that cartilage and this hyaline cartilage is made up of predominantly collagen fibers so that means it's a, it's a very strong type of cartilage. And our hyaline cartilage is the most common type of cartilage in the body because it basically lines our bones where the bones are connected to one another via joints. So it's the hyaline cartilage that is found around, the bo around our bones and around the joints and this hyaline cartilage reduces the friction between bones It also absorbs some of that shock as a result of the forces that we experience due to our daily movement. Now, the second type of cartilage is the elastic cartilage, and this cartilage contains a high proportion of elastin fibers, and that makes it very flexible. And so it's no surprise that elastic cartilage is a type of cartilage that is found in our outer ears, so it's very, very flexible, as well as our epiglottis that constantly has to move, and so it must remain flexible. The epiglottis is found inside our neck. Now, the fiber cartilage is the final type of cartilage that consists of two types of collagen fibers, type 1 and type 2. And it's the fiber cartilage that is found in the intervertebral discs inside our spine. So, as we mentioned earlier, cartilage consists of cells known as chondrocytes. And these chondrocytes are the cells that create the extracellular matrix, the matrix surrounding those chondrocytes, and this is known as the chondrin. So, the chondrin is the matrix of our cartilage, and it's the chondrin, it's the extracellular matrix that is composed of these three different types of substances in different proportions compare in different proportions basically uh, those proportions depend on the type of cartilage that we are examining so if we examine the hyaline cartilage that is found for example on the top portion of long bones and that is shown here. So this is also known as articular cartilage because it is also connected to our joints. And if we zoom in on this type of hyaline cartilage, we basically will find the matrix, the chondrin, and our chondrocytes, our cells. And this chondrin will be composed predominantly of our collagen fibers because hyaline cartilage consists predominantly of collagen. So, now let's move on to the three different types of joints. 
we have the fixed joints, the synovial joints, as well as our uh, cartilaginous joints. So the fixed joints are also known as our immovable or fibrous joints. And these are the joints that connect our bones and, and hold those bones very strongly, very tightly. And so these fibrous joints basically allow no movement between the bone and these fibrous joints are found in the skull as well as uh, around our teeth. So when our human is born, the skull actually consists of individual bones. But as the organism develops, as the human develops, these bones basically fuse together and the regions where they fuse, that is known as a suture. So we have the coronal suture, we have the squamous suture, we have the lambdoid suture as shown in the diagram. And if we zoom in on either one of these three sutures, we basically get the following image. So we have the bone section and we have this joint shown in blue. And, the, and this is our fibrous joint, also known as the fixed or immovable joint. And the same thing on the teeth. If we zoom in on this single upper tooth that is connected to our upper jaw, also known as our maxilla, uh, so basically, the maxilla is connected to our tooth via this joint known as our fixed joint shown in blue. <coughs> so basically, <coughs> when the human is born, they begin to develop and the density of fibers inside this joint basically increases tremendously. It becomes very dense and the fibers in the joint are the collagen fibers and that's exactly what makes this joint so strong. Now the second type of joint is our synovial joint and these are the joints that basically create a very wide range of movement. These are joints found in our elbows as well as in our knees. So let's say this is bone number one, this is bone number two. We have the purple regions, our ligaments, that connect bone to bone. We have these blue, uh, the, uh, the brown regions, which are the articular cartilage, the hyaline cartilage that we spoke about earlier, that reduces friction and that absorbs some of that shock. And we have this blue region, shown. Now the blue region is basically a cavity known as the synovial cavity and inside this synovial cavity we basically contain our synovial fluid and this synovial fluid does not only lubricate and provide nutrients to our cartilage but it also contains macrophages cells that basically engulf different type of harmful bacteria that can harm our cartilage. Cartilage. So basically this joint, the synovial joint consists of our ligaments, it consists of this synovial fluid that basically nourishes this cartilage and it also consists of this hyaline cartilage that absorbs the shock and also basically reduces the friction between our bones so the bones don't actually rub against one another. So the synovial joint consists of a cavity that contains our synovial fluid which actually to nourish our cartilage found nearby. It also contains macrophages that eat up harmful material. These joints provide a wide range of movement to our connecting bones, unlike in this case where the range of movement was none. The, the purpose of fixed joints is to basically hold our bones in place, whereas the point of synovial joints is to basically create a wide range of movement to allow a wide range of movement. Now, the final type of joint is our cartilaginous joint. And our cartilaginous joint basically allows very little movement to no movement. So usually the movement due to these joints is slightly more than our fixed joints, but it's much less than our synovial joint. And these types of joint consist entirely of cartilage, either hyaline cartilage or the fiber cartilage. And these are the joints that are found in our rib cage as well as in our pubic symphysis, uh, symphysis which is uh, our bone found in our hip. So basically, if we think of our rib cage, the rib cage actually has to expand back and forth 
as we breathe in and out. So we have to have a slight ability uh, of our uh, bones to actually move. And that's exactly why this cartilaginous uh, joint basically allows a slight amount of movement while the fixed joint does not. So we don't want these bones to actually move while the bones in the rib cage we do want them to move because as we breathe in and out we want our rib cage to continually be able to expand as well as compress with our breathing rhythm.